Now we'll talk about borrowing. And this is something you sometimes have to do when you subtract. And this is probably something you've done before in an earlier math class. But we'll review the topic here and work a few examples before going on to the next topic. And I want you to understand why borrowing works. I don't want you to simply know a mechanical process of how to do it, but understand why it works. And the key, of course, to understanding this is place value. As you will see in this example, 83 minus 25. When we do the subtraction, we start, as always, in the right-hand column. And when we try to do 3 minus 5, we run into a problem. The 5 is bigger than the 3. We can't take 5 away from 3. So what do we do? Well, this 8 represents 8 tens. I'm going to take one of those tens away. So I'll cross that out and make it a 7. So one of those tens is gone. And I'm going to stick it over here on the 3. And I usually put a 1 right there. And think of that as 13. That's a 1, 3, 13. So that 1 right there represents a 10. I've just taken one of the 10s away from the 8 and given it to the 3, making it a 13. So there's still the same number of 10s. There are still 8 10s. I have 7 of them left here, plus the 1 that is being borrowed over here by the right-hand column. Now I can subtract 13 minus 5 gives me 8. So borrowing that 1 from the next column allowed me to subtract. Then when I subtract in the tens column, I have a 7 there. And 7 minus 2 is 5. So I have 58 for an answer. And again, we can check our work. If 83 minus 25 is 58, then 58 plus 25 should give me 83. So let's do this check and make sure we get that. 58 plus 25, and we add them up. 8 plus 5 is 13, and then 5 and 2 is 7, plus the 1 is 8. Sure enough, I get 83. Sometimes we have to borrow multiple times, as you'll see in these three examples. In this first one here, 231 minus 158. Well, 1 minus 8, I can't do that, so I need to borrow 1 from the 3. So the 3 becomes a 2, and I'll stick the 1 here. Now I have 11 minus 8, and 11 minus 8 is 3. And then in the next column, when I try to do 2 minus 5, I can't because the 5 is bigger than the 2, so I have to borrow again. So I borrow 1 from the next column. That 2 becomes a 1, and I take the other one and stick it on there. So now I have a 12 minus 5, which is 7. And then a 1 minus 1 is nothing, so 73 is my answer. Okay, over here in this example, 3 minus 5, I can't do, so I need to borrow. So I take this 1 there and give them to the 3. So that's now a 13 right there. And that 1 becomes a 0. But now I can do 13 minus 5. 13 minus 5 is 8. In the next column, though, I can't do 0 minus 2. So I come over here to this 2 and make it a 1 and stick that 1 over here on that 0, making it a 10. So now I have 10 right there minus 2. And 10 minus 2 is 8. Then in the hundreds column, I have a 1 minus 6. And I can't do that, so I need to borrow again. So I come over here to the thousands column. The 5 becomes a 4. And the extra 1 goes there. So now I have 11 right there minus 6. And 11 minus 6 is 5. And then in the thousands column, I can do 4 minus 1. That's a 3. So 3,588 is my answer. And then in this example down here, 4 minus 7, I can't do. So I need to borrow 
to make this a 14, but I can't borrow anything from the 0. Before I can borrow from the 0, I need to make it a 10. So I come over to the next column. The 3 becomes a 2, and the 1 that was taken away from that 3 goes here onto the 10. And then that 10 gets crossed out and becomes a 9, and one that 1 taken away from the 10 comes over here with the 4. So now I have a 14 minus 7, which is 7. And then in the tens column, I have a 9 minus 1, which is an 8. Then in the hundreds column, I have a 2 minus a 7. And I can't take 7 away from 2 because 7 is bigger than 2. So I come over to the next column, the 6 right there. I cross it out, make it a 5 and stick that extra one there on the 2. So now I have a 12 minus 7 right there, which gives me a 5. And then in the thousands column, I can do 5 minus 2, which is 3. So 3,587 is my answer. And we could check each of those with addition.